What's that? A toaster. How can you not know this, you might think? But maybe in thousands of years, people will forget the answer to this simple question because they won't use toasters anymore. Just like the characters from Philip Reeve's Fantastic Universe, they found various household items from the past and kept their findings in museums because they simply didn't understand how to use them. And we're pretty much alike. Our museums are also filled with unexplainable things from different eras. Many of them were obviously invented ahead of their time and must have been created with particular technology or knowledge. Scientists call them out-of-place artifacts. Let's find out how they appeared, who tried to create the first ever version of Hubble, and who developed the ancient computer. And finally, can we figure out the purpose of ancient technology? Why would the ancient Romans use nanotechnology? This work, the so-called Lycurgus Cup, proves that ancient Roman masters used nanotechnology 1,600 years before us. The thing is that the cup changes its color depending on how the light falls on it. If it's lit from the front, it's jade green. If it's backlit, it's blood red. Researchers have been struggling with this effect for hundreds of years, till 1990 when English scientists finally studied the cup under a microscope. It turned out that the Romans had crushed silver and gold particles down to 50 nanometers in diameter and then added them to the glass. When light hits the particles, the electrons in them vibrate in such a way that they change color. Some believe that this effect was achieved by accident. However, ancient people knew about physics more than we think. For example, the Indian scientist Acharya Kanad knew about atoms even before our era. He explained that a grain of rice could be broken down to such an extent that it could no longer go further. So, the ancient Romans might have used their technology for a reason. Maybe with the help of the cup, the nobles searched for the most honest among their subjects. A king showed the cup that was red from his side and waited. Who among those present would dare to disagree and tell the truth that the cup was green? After all, it was indeed green from the observer's point of view. Anyway, the Romans weren't the only ones who used glass to confuse everyone. Why did the ancient Assyrians make lenses? This piece of rock crystal was found in 1850 in the city of Nimrud in present-day Iraq. The Nimrud lens was created about 3,000 years ago. It was roughly ground, perhaps even using a grinding wheel. The Italian scholar Giovanni Pettinato supposed that the ancient Assyrians used the Nimrud lens as part of a telescope that could explain their knowledge of space bodies back in the day. According to Pettinato, the ancient Assyrians saw the rings of Saturn through a telescope and thus portrayed him as a god surrounded by snakes. Similar lenses were probably used by other nations. This is Bhaskaracharya. He was an Indian astronomer and mathematician who lived in the 12th century AD. The scientists somehow made exact calculations and found out that it takes a little more than 365 days for Earth to fully rotate around the Sun. However, most experts don't believe that he used a telescope for that, as such devices aren't mentioned in any of the astronomical writings that have survived to this day. And I would agree with that. I think ancient people would try to invent something cooler. Since they observed, studied, and recorded a lot, they needed something to help them like a computer, and that's how they started inventing it. Though they began not from the engine, but from the crystal screen. And I'm only partially joking here, because the computer was really invented long before our days. How and why was the Antikythera mechanism created? This mechanical device was retrieved from the water in 1901 near Antikythera Island. The mechanism was created in around the 2nd century BC. It sank together with an ancient Greek ship and got covered with marine sediment over the years underwater. That's why its study dragged on for hundreds of years. Although many parts were missing, the researchers discovered that the mechanism consisted of at least 30 bronze gears in a rectangular wooden case. Dials with pointers were placed on the front and back bronze panels. 
the anti-kathir mechanism has stirred the scientific community. Specialists from all over the world got together to find out its purpose. The anti-kathir mechanism turned out to be a calendar as well as an astronomical, meteorological, and cartographic device. This is the oldest example of an analog machine, the first known mechanical solar system, a planetarium, and an astronomical clock. Yep, overall, it's just an ancient computer. With its help, the ancient Greeks predicted the position of the sun, the phases of the moon, calculated solar and lunar eclipses, and the dates of the most important Greek games and festivals. Since there was a computer, there also must have been ancient Greek IT specialists. Apparently, the statement that all developers are the sons of gods dates back to the ancient world. Anyway, the Antikythera mechanism proves that ancient people were interested in space. They wanted to learn as much as they could, and perhaps even travel beyond the atmosphere. After all, they were also the first to invent aircraft. How and why was the Indian flying machine created? Ancient Indian writings often mention the so-called Vimanas, aircraft that helped people see Earth from above. Drawings and descriptions of Vimanas still confuse researchers. Just listen. According to the description in an ancient book, the body of the Vimana was made of lightweight and durable metal. Four vessels with mercury were placed inside, with sources of fire under each of them that could be controlled by a person on the Vimana. Heated mercury provided enough energy for the aircraft to take off. And according to ancient books, the chariot was as fast as thunder. And in fact, there are loads of detailed descriptions. Although many people believe that Vimanas are a hoax, there is a possibility that they really existed, or at least that ancient people tried to create them. Vimanas could help in trade, or even war. According to some writings, those boiling furnaces with mercury were so noisy that they were used to scare away war elephants. But personally, I think Vimanas were built for a different reason. People wanted to meet the gods, count them, and figure out the fictional and the real ones to slightly reduce their number. Alas, apparently they failed, because there are no less than 300 million deities in Hinduism today. Many of the things surrounding us may also become weird findings retrieved from the underground one day. The world is developing too fast, and here's the proof. Some members of Generation Z really don't get why the call icon on smartphones looks like this. For them, that's just an image, because they never used wired telephones, and moreover, they never really got to see them. Which modern devices do you think future scientists won't be able to explain? Also, check out my other videos, like this one, where I dive into what human civilization would develop into in the nearest future if we were to follow the theories of the famous Soviet scientist and futurist Nikolai Kardashev.